The task of moving loads of loose bulk material, logs and tree length wood, or pallets of finished lumber, plywood, or veneer is accomplished by the use of heavy machinery. These machines come in many different shapes and sizes. Depending on what the load is and what type of lifting device is used, a fork or a clam, for example, each of these machines have different operating requirements, different capabilities, and different handling characteristics. Now, here's where you come in, the yard loader operator. Loading yards are busy, noisy, and dangerous places to work. It's your job to know the hazards you will encounter. It's your job to know your machine, its capability, and handling characteristics. And it's your job to carry out safe work practices every time, all the time. In this module, we'll examine some of the different types of yard loader machines and take a look at how they're used. We'll also describe some common hazards you'll face as the operator of these heavy machines. Let's take a look at the log loaders first. Log loaders are designed for the heavy work in sawmill and veneer plywood yards. Equipped with either tracks or tires, these machines can move logs from truck or rail cars using a clam and knuckle boom that can then be raised or lowered directly in front of the loader and then swung and piled nearby. An alternative method is seen in a log loader that uses a fork and clam to grab bundles of logs for transfer to stockpiles or onto other processing machines, a feed deck for example. Another type of yard loader is the one equipped with a forklift and platform used to transport lumber and sheets of plywood and veneer from processing areas to stockpiles as well as onto trucks or rail cars. These loads vary in size and weight, but are almost always carried by some type of forklift or forklift clam attachment. Some loaders have articulated center frame steering, and others are solid frame with rear wheel steering. All are equipped with large pneumatic tires. The third type of yard loader commonly seen in sawmill or veneer plywood yards is basically the same machine as the others, but this time equipped with a large bucket attachment. These loaders are used to move loose bulk materials such as sawdust, wood chips, and hog fuel. All of these yard loaders have hazards associated with their operation. Some of the hazards are unique to the type of machine. Other hazards arise due to different operating conditions such as weather or terrain, but some hazards are common to any yard area no matter what type of machine is being used. It's your responsibility as an operator to be aware of these conditions and to carry out safe operating procedures that will avoid or reduce the hazards you'll encounter. Your life or someone else's is at stake. Being aware of the hazards that exist in operating any type of yard loader is a first step in developing safe work habits. Let's take a look at some of the most common hazards you'll face in day-to-day -day operations. Many yard loader hazards exist simply because the yard you work in is a busy and crowded place. Several different types of vehicles and machines, as well as workers on foot, are using the same space. Your ability to view all this activity from the cab may be hampered by your load or by stockpiles of lumber or logs. The machine you operate and other machines operating around you are noisy. All of these situations contribute to the risk of running into another machine or hitting a worker on foot. The danger zone hazard is another important area to understand. Every machine has a danger zone that includes the area immediately on or around the machine where parts of the loader could strike a worker on foot or another machine should they come too close without you knowing it. Hazards also exist in places where the yard loader shares roadways with trucks or other vehicles, or where loaders are required to cross railway tracks. Overhead wires can also be deadly if any part of the loader or its load comes into close proximity to them. Weather and terrain bring still more dangerous situations into the picture. 
Snow and rain can limit visibility and cause poor traction. Rough terrain and steep inclines can lead to rollover accidents or spilled loads. Drop-off, side hill travel, and weakened edges around roadways can also lead to rollover accidents. There are also many hazards associated with the load itself. If it is not balanced properly, if the weight exceeds the machine's capacity or that of the lifting attachment, if the load is not lifted or lowered properly, or if incorrect loading or piling occur, the machine could either overturn or the load could fall from the machine or pile and seriously harm or kill another worker. The final area of hazards that you need to be aware of are those that place you, the operator, at direct risk of injury while driving the loader. For example, slip and fall injuries that occur while mounting or dismounting the machine account for many of the lost time injuries experienced by operators. There is also risk of hearing damage because of the noise experienced while operating the loader. As well, the constant bouncing and jostling in the cab can cause ongoing muscle aches and pains and even back injuries. As you can see, operating a yard loader is a dangerous business, both for you and others working near you. Certain safety rules and regulations are set down that, if carefully followed, will help you eliminate or avoid the hazards you'll encounter. Next, we'll have a look at some of the safety considerations that are important to the everyday operation of the yard loader. of you know that operating your own car or truck safely means knowing the vehicle, following the rules of the road, and making sure it's in good repair. You know how your own vehicle handles in snow or ice or whenever there's a heavy load. You also know you must make sure the brakes are working, the tires are good, and the motor is tuned up. Well, it's the same thing with the yard loader you drive. Knowing your machine, keeping it in top working order, and following safe driving procedures will eliminate most of the hazards you'll encounter and help you safely through a dangerous situation. One of the first things a yard loader operator must do at the start of every working day is inspect the machine thoroughly to ensure that critical operating functions and safety measures are in good working order. This is called a circle check and it involves a thorough systematic inspection of the machine using one of these an inspection checklist. Yard loaders will differ in terms of what items get checked and in what order. What's important is that you follow the procedure set down for your machine to ensure it will operate safely. Let's take a closer look to learn more about the essential parts of any effective circle check inspection. The inspection checklist, usually one designed by your company, is specific for the machine you operate. Follow the sequence outlined on the form. It will help you to remember all the things that need to be checked and ensure that nothing is overlooked. The term circle check describes exactly what you do. You examine the machine by following a check of all systems while working progressively in a circle around the entire machine. Among the most important things to check are the following. The fuel system, including the tanks, hoses, and filters, are checked for leaks, loose attachments, and worn or damaged areas. Examine each wheel and tire as you move around the machine to make sure the lug nuts are tight and the valve stems are intact. Also see that the tires are properly inflated and free from gouges, cuts, nails, stones, or other debris. Look over the frame and lift attachments and watch for structural damage or other signs of abnormal wear and tear. The electrical wiring harnesses and drive belts are inspected to ensure they are not loose, frayed, or damaged. Fluid levels in the transmission, hydraulic system, and coolant system are checked to ensure proper levels. Also, make sure that ladders, steps, and walking surfaces are in good repair and are free from the buildup of oil, grease, ice, or snow.
One of the most important parts of the circle check is what you do after you find something wrong. Depending on your company policy, some of the items found in need of attention may be your responsibility. Adding oil or hydraulic fluid, for example. Other things may need to be reported and taken care of by a trained technician. Whatever the case, make sure that the item is dealt with correctly. Don't jeopardize your safety or the safety of others by putting repairs off to another time. The other important step in checking out your machine before each shift is a proper start-up and warm-up. Each machine should be equipped with an operator's manual and a company procedure that sets out the proper starting and warm-up sequence for that machine. You need to be familiar with these requirements to ensure that the machine is ready to do the work it's designed for. First, notice how this driver uses three-point contact when climbing into the loader. When properly seated, the operator first checks to see that the controls are in neutral before starting up the machine. Most loaders are equipped with neutral safety switches. In any case, the control should return to neutral when released. The engine is started, and while waiting for temperature and pressures to reach their operating range, the operator checks the lights, the horn, makes sure the fire extinguisher and first aid kit are available, and that the windows are clean and the cab is tidy. After the gauges indicate that everything is at safe operational levels, the operator checks the danger zone, watches for other traffic, and moves the loader a short distance to test the brakes, steering, backup alarm, and hydraulic implements. Now that you're ready to begin work, you need to know a number of common sense rules that govern a safe operation of yard loader machines such as this one. Following these rules every time you climb into the cab is being professional and taking responsibility. If you're smart, you'll do it the right way every time. Let's review some of these rules. Yard loader machines are a big part of any mill operation. All of the raw material and finished products almost always comes into contact with the yard loader at some time. That's a lot of opportunity for accidents to happen if safety rules are ignored. Let's look at traffic, for example. At intersections and blind spots, the traffic can get pretty hectic. Yard loaders are coming and going, trucks and other vehicles are using the same roadways, and there are also workers on foot. A lot of the time, you are either looking through the carriage assembly in front, then looking left, right, and behind, checking the danger zones. One second, the coast is clear, and the next, there's something in your way. You need to anticipate the movement of others. Pay attention, be properly seated in the cab, and be prepared to stop or take evasive action. Because a heavy load will affect the loader's maneuverability and its ability to stop quickly, the loaded vehicle has the right of way. Obey the danger zone rules. All workers in the yard should be wearing high visibility clothing or vests. Make eye contact with other drivers or pedestrians. Know the communication system and properly signal the person when it's safe to move. Respect the fact that you are at a disadvantage. Visibility may be limited by the load or by piles of lumber or logs in the yard. Rain, snow or dust can also limit visibility and noise will block out the sound of other vehicles or machines. Excess speed can be one of the greatest hazards when operating a yard loader. Adjust speed to the load and driving conditions. Be on the lookout for bad road conditions or obstacles in the roadway. Above all, avoid sudden stops, especially if you're carrying a load. If you encounter an obstruction, stop and remove or avoid it. Watch for overhead wires, catwalks, or other obstructions from above that could come into contact with the loader. These are just some of the most important safety rules for yard loader operation. But before we move on to other areas, let's have a brief look at two more important items of concern, fire prevention and fuel safety. Every yard loader is manufactured with features that minimize the chances of fire. The muffler, exhaust, and ignition systems are designed to shield hot surfaces from combustionable material and prevent backfiring or other ignition-related problems that could cause a fire. Some machines are even equipped with fire suppression systems. 
All machines should be equipped with fire extinguishers that are properly charged. You need to keep an eye on warning lights and gauges that will indicate overheating or other problems that could lead to a fire. The operator's manual will point out these warning systems. Good housekeeping is a basic rule of fire prevention. Remove and clean the buildup of oil, grease, and dirty rags. Or make sure that sawdust, chips, and bark don't build up in enclosed spaces where heat from the engine or exhaust could start a fire. When you're doing a circle check, keep an eye out for frayed and worn electrical wires, leaks from fuel or hydraulic fluids, or loose or frayed cables on the battery. Fueling the loader can be hazardous if some basic safety rules are not followed. First, shut the engine off. Wear the proper personal protective equipment, rubber or leather gloves, for example. Diesel fuel spilled on your skin can cause serious chemical burns. Carefully insert the fueling nozzle into the fuel intake so that spills don't occur and continue to monitor the fueling process. Always park the loader on level ground away from combustible material and a safe distance from other machines. One final point. When shutting down the engine after extended periods of work, let the engine idle for a few minutes. This allows the hot engine to cool and return to normal operating temperatures. That completes our review of some of the most important items in basic safe operating procedures. Now we'll have a look at some of the hazards you'll encounter in loading, unloading, and traveling around the yard. Aside from the safety rules we've already covered, there probably isn't a more important one than knowing your machine. By that I mean being completely familiar with its handling characteristics in all kinds of situations, knowing the work capacity of the machine, and staying within the bounds of what the machine was designed to do. Let's begin by taking a look at what you need to know about the loader's capacity and how that affects its handling characteristics. The operator's manual is one source that will guide you in determining the maximum weight of material you can carry, as well as other important things, like safe speeds and rollover thresholds. Many companies will also comply with the regulations to inform employees about rated capacities by posting or attaching a decal, sign, or plate in the cab that clearly describes a maximum rated load capacity of that loader. Some companies will also provide charts or tables that operators use to determine the load capacity when the size and type of load varies. As a general rule of thumb, the higher the load is carried or the farther away from the loader, the lower the rated capacity. When it comes to load capacity, always err on the side of safety and reduce loads in bad weather when you have to deal with rough roads or when traction is poor. The maximum rated load capacity may also vary depending on the type of lifting device that is being used. Load capacities are always determined on the basis of the manufacturer's originally installed or added equipment. Any modifications or changes resulting from substandard or incorrect parts being used could result in a failure of key components and cause an accident. You also need to be aware that the weight of loads will vary because of such things as moisture content, the buildup of ice and snow, and even different species of wood. Take this into account when determining the size of your load. Another important part of determining load capacity has to do with the center of gravity of the machine you operate. For example, the handling and stability of the loader is affected by the weight of the load being carried, as well as how high it is being carried. More detailed information about balancing the load will be provided in the classroom sessions. The stability of the machine when traveling without a load will be different than when traveling with one. You need to be familiar with these handling characteristics and drive accordingly. Here are some important things you must keep in mind. A loader is generally more stable when traveling with a load. If the weight of the load and its carrying position is correct, it will help to stabilize the loader and 
improve traction and reduce bouncing. The operator must adjust speed to the road conditions and the weight of the load, especially if the road includes tight turns or rough roads. The inertia of the loaded machine must be taken into consideration when judging stopping distances. Remember, the load might hamper your visibility and it certainly will have an effect on the machine's maneuverability and response time. Ice, snow or wet roadways will also affect maneuverability and stopping distances. The load must also be carried at the correct height. Loads that are higher than a backrest can fall backwards onto the loader. Loads carried too low can hit the ground and cause damage to the loader, cause the load to spill, or possibly injure the driver or someone walking close by. Loads carried on forks or in fork clams must also be balanced on the carrying device. Load capacities in the same loader will vary with different attachments that might be added from time to time. Information regarding the rated load capacity for these different attachments must be identified in the cab for reference by the driver. The last point we want to make about carrying loads is the importance of following the requirements for safe material stacking or piling, whether it's logs, loose material, or pallets of finished lumber. You are responsible for making sure your load is properly and safely stacked. The regulations require that all these different materials must be transported, placed, and stored in such a way that they will not tip, collapse, or fall. They must be stacked or stored so that they can be safely removed or withdrawn without endangering the safety of any worker. Stacking methods and requirements will vary depending on the type of material, logs, pallets of finished lumber, or sheets of plywood, for example. Make sure that you know the methods and the requirements for the type of load you are carrying and that you follow the company rules and guidelines for material stacking. There you have it, some important safety reminders about loading, piling, and the handling characteristics of your loader. Before we wrap this up though, there's one more area that's critical to the safe operation of a yard loader, and that's routine maintenance and repair. An important part of your responsibility for keeping the yard loader you operate in smooth running order is ensuring that routine maintenance and repairs are completed. Sometimes you may be called upon to carry out some of these tasks yourself. Or you may be asked to assist the technician in the repair garage when things are getting fixed. Here are some important safety pointers for you to follow while maintenance is being carried out. Always work in a well-lit and ventilated area. Make sure the loader is shut down properly, controls are in neutral, transmission locked, and key removed. The hydraulic implements are lowered to the ground. If they cannot be lowered to the ground, they must be properly blocked. Follow established lockout and tag procedures. Do not remove any guards until all moving parts have come to a complete stop and the machine is properly locked out. Remove jewelry like watches and rings and make sure you are not wearing any loose clothing. Beware of fluids under high pressure in coolant and hydraulic hoses. Never check for hydraulic fluid leaks with your bare hand. Use a piece of wood or cardboard. Hydraulic fluid under pressure can cause a thin jet of toxic fluid from a leak to pierce your skin and result in some very serious injuries. Maintain constant communication with workers you may be assisting. Make sure both of you understand each other's signals and directions and are aware of each other's whereabouts. Never operate the controls or activate any switches from the cab while the technician is in the danger zone. If you are unsure of what's required of you, stop and ask for clearer instructions. Always use proper hoisting and lifting equipment. Make sure it is designed to do the job you want done. Use proper lifting techniques yourself when picking up heavy things like machine parts or pails of grease. 
Slips and falls are common injuries in maintenance areas. Good housekeeping is the best solution. Clean up any spills of liquid or grease on the machine and on the floor. Remove debris and put away tools and equipment that aren't in use. Carrying out routine maintenance and repairs is important to the efficient and safe operation of the loader. But you must remember to do it the safe way. There's just too much chance for injury when working around heavy machinery like this. Operating a loader, no matter what type, brings some pretty heavy responsibility to you, the operator. Your safety and that of your fellow workers is at stake. Know your machine. Understand its handling characteristics and capacities. Know the hazards and follow safe practices every time you climb into the cab.